Hi, I'm Rich Wagner. Today I'm going to show you how to install a tune-up kit on the uh, Mark Series brakes. We got the Mark Series 1, 2, and 4. They're all the same. It's a 14-inch casting, so across the platform, everything pretty much operates the same. There's just more uh, casting stations. So I bring the brake to kind of the open position, so the cams are uh, set up to the top. You want to start by removing this Phillips head screw. Um, this is the one that locks the cam tube in place. Just unscrew that. You have two Phillips head screws on the handle bracket. Remove those two. Remove the fast pins. Set the handle down in front of the brake. Seven sixteenths nut and bolt. Reinstall your Phillips bit. Take out the two screws that are remaining in the bracket. So when removing the cam tube, sometimes it's a little sticky from the screws when they were screwed in, so you want to take you know, a light dead blow hammer, kind of loosen the cam tube. Now I like to, when I remove the cam tube, leave the cams in their positions and I like to kind of leave the handle brackets in their position on the back side of the brake so I remember where everything goes. You can always reference back to the video, look at how the cams are positioned. Um, they all should face up. There is a key way that they follow. So you remove the cam tubes. I just take the cams, set them on the back of the brake. So, like I said, you know, here's the handle bracket. Now I know the handle bracket goes in this area. Place the cam, handle bracket, cam. Next, after you have the cam tube removed, you want to remove the cam tube bearings. Um, when removing the bearings, you just kind of push them in and out. If you have to, take a you know, flathead screwdriver and kind of knock at them, push them forward. But for the most part, they can push out. Make sure you clean and inspect for cracks or you know, blemishes. Just wipe them clean or clean them with soap and water and uh, set them in position on the back of your brake and remove all of them. After removing the cam uh, two bearings, you're going to lift your F-bar up and expose the spring. Here's a spring. This is a spring that needs to be replaced. You just drop and insert the new one into the slot, and then that pin will collapse on top of it. Next, you'll want to remove your wedges. So, unscrew each station. Now to uh, install your wedges, you're going to need a wedge, star washer, quarter inch flat washer, Phillips head. So you're going to place the wedge, if you note know right here the two tick marks, that is factory settings, you're going to place the wedge there. Put your washer on, and then your star washer goes on top of the wedge. Kind of force the wedge back to the factory position and lock it down. Next step, 
You're gonna replace all the cam tube bearings. You wanna face them, the flange dairy faced in towards the casting. Next, you want to put your cams in position. So remember the or orientation. So the first cam has the hole in it. This locks in the cam tube. But remember the orientation. So you want this, this flat area facing towards the operator. Line up the keyway towards the top. So what I do is keep kind of everything in position and line it up like that. The reason why it's so important to get these orientated right is if you have them flipped around, it'll bind when you go to lock your brake down. Next, you'll grab your cam tube. It's a lot easier to do with another set of hands, but you can do it by yourself. Line up the cam with the keyway in the cam to the cam tube. Remember your handles as you're bringing them through. Once again, handle bracket, make sure it's positioned in the right way. Now you'll take your drill or your screw gun. So you're gonna line up your cam. With the hole in the cam tube. Next, you wanna slide your Handle brackets into place. Next, you'll install your handle plugs. These are installed with quarter 20 two-way lock nuts. So you don't want to tighten them down all the way. You just want to snug them up to where the nut holds in place and the handle plugs that remain loose. Like so. Next, you'll take your handle and your new supplied bass pins, slip them in. Make sure that the brake functions properly and locks fully. Next, you'll want to uh, inspect and make sure that um, the clamping pressure is equal across, so you want to cut 2 inch by 4 inch, basically 019 uh, trim coil. Slide them under each casting station. Fully lock the brake. And you want to check it doesn't pull out. Move it, try to move it back and forth and try to pull out. You're completely adjusted. If the card was loose, you would open the brake, loosen the screw, move it a sixteenth of an inch forward, clamp, readjust, make sure everything's equal pressure, and then that's it. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the vinyl strip and replace that. Um, I personally like to take a pair of needle nose, 
I just grab the edge of it and I pull it completely out. Now normally your brake has been out in the field. It's dirty, dusty. Um, you know, you can take soapy water, uh, anything, you know, like any light spray oil. Um, I like to go in and spray this whole area out, wipe it clean, maybe even take compressed air. So after removing the vinyl strip at the end of the hinges, they uh, interrupt the hole where the vinyl track slides into. So what you want to do is take a 1 16th drill bit and drill in roughly about 1 16th of an inch on either end just to clear that interruption. And then that you can recreate that interruption. Um, so you take the drill, drill in. on both sides. Then what you want to do is take your new strip What I like to do is take the end, take the end, square it off, and then I take that edge and I create a leading edge. I take my vice grips, clamp them on a 45. I slip it into this track right here. Now it's nice if you have somebody help hold this straight like that. You have a few extra feet when you get the material lead, just sit there and relax if it was tight pulling it in and out and then as you know, as the vinyl relaxes, cut it back about a, you know, you can leave about a half inch edge off of each side. Then to finish it up, you're gonna um, interrupt the hole. And what I normally use is a, a, a center punch. You can use a flathead screwdriver, but you just take it and go next to the hole and you want to punch it to where you interrupt the hole so the vinyl doesn't pull in or out. And that's it. Click subscribe for more videos.